Uh, welcome to everyone uh, on both sides of the globe. Um, those in China, good morning. Those in Chicago, good evening. And I welcome uh, and thank everyone for joining in this um, celebration, 10th year celebration of the center and uh, highlighting uh, the wonderful work uh, that was done in uh, Wuhan in terms of medical education reform. I am Michael Millis. I am the third faculty director of the center in Beijing. I was appointed the faculty director in October of 2019, just three months prior to uh, when COVID became a problem. This has created challenges for us at the center, um, but hopefully our experience will make us and the center stronger. I am a, a professor of surgery uh, and uh, has, have been a, a transplant surgeon for uh, 26 years at the University of Chicago. And uh, tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing the WUMAR team. And um, we will start with Hu Su Ping. Uh, Su Ping is the chief physician and associate professor in the Department of Respiratory Medicine and deputy director in the Department of Internal Medicine at Renming Hospital of Wuhan University. Professor Hu is the Chief Physician and Associate Professor in the Department of Respiratory Medicine, and she is the Deputy Director of the Department of Internal Medicine at the Renmin Hospital of Wuhan University. She is also Head of the Teaching Reform Course, uh, Clinical Pathology, Pathophysiology, and Therapeutics, um, with the acronym CPPT, which you will hear um, a lot about uh, and use those uh, acronym, use that acronym frequently tonight in the medical department of Wuhan University. In 2006, she received a doctorate degree in internal medicine from Wuhan University. Professor Hu has engaged in clinical medicine and teaching for 36 years. She won three uh, provincial science and teaching progress awards participated in the editing of 13 monographs, and she has published 30 papers. She is responsible for the preparation and construction of the CPPT teaching reform curriculum, integrating basic science and clinical knowledge. She led the teaching team, completed 10 rounds of teaching work, and trained 20 master's students. My next introduction is Fan Jingyi. And... Um, Jing Yi is the director uh, of the Office of International Medical Education and Exchange Cooperation. She is the chief physician and associate professor in the Department of Pediatrics at Zhong, Zhongnan Hospital of Wuhan University. Professor Fan is the chief physician and uh, associate professor in the Department of Pediatrics. Um, she supervises postgraduate students at the Second Clinical College and Institute De of Development and Educational Psychology of Wuhan University. Professor Fan's research focus is on the diagnosis, treatment, and basic research of children's mental, behavioral, and neurologic diseases. She is a trained clinical pediatric neurologist and operates a biweekly children and adolescent neurologic and mental illness clinic in the pediatrics department of Zhongzhan Hospital of Wuhan University. Dr. Fan was a faculty member in the Department of Anatomy uh, at the University of Chicago Pritzker School of Medicine from 2008 through 2010, and she was an invaluable member of the early planning for the Wumar project in 2009. Her critical contributions to medical education reform uh, at Wuhan University continued when she returned to Wuhan University in 2010. Next is Renslow Shearer. He is the director of the Wuhan University Medical Education Reform Project, the uh, WUMAR project. He is the director of the International HIV Training Center. He's a professor of medicine in, this, in the section of infectious diseases and global health in the Department of Medicine at the University of Chicago. Dr. Shearer has been an international leader in HIV clinical training programs and clinical trials of HIV therapies and HIV prevention programs and in local and federal policy on HIV and AIDS. He has numerous publications on HIV and medical education, and he has given numerous presentations on the clinical and social impact of the HIV pandemic at conferences all over the world. Dr. Shearer 
was a member of the Department of Health and Human Services HIV Treatment Guidelines Panel for 14 years and a member of the China National, China National AIDS Treatment Panel for four years. Dr. Shearer is the co-editor of the book entitled Medical Education Reform in China, Lessons from the Wuhan lessons from Wuhan University with the former vice president and vice dean of Wuhan University. He has led health worker trainings in China, Africa, and all over the world. He is currently leading a prep study in Wuhan and Guangzhou in China and uh, HI and a COVID-19 uh, study in Chicago. Next is Jonathan Leo. He is assistant professor in the section of infectious diseases and global health in the Department of Medicine. He's associate uh, director of the Wuhan University Medical Education uh, Reform Project, and he's co-director of the International Medical Educators Program. Um, he is a member of the faculty steering committee of the Wuhan of the University of Chicago Center in Beijing. As associate director for the WUMAR project, he has worked with Wuhan University to implement competency-based medical education at their residency training program. And he has spoken at national residency educational conferences at the Peking Union Medical College Hospital and other hospitals across China. He has advised the China Medical Board Consortium of Elite Hospitals for residency training. Dr. Liu was the first author on three papers that were chosen among the top 100 excellent papers on medical education in China in 2018. Um, now, uh, I'm going to start off uh, the program with uh, Rinslow and ask him the question, how was the R R Wumar uh, project first conceived and what are some of the key outcomes from this initiative? Uh, thank you, Michael. It's really an honor to be with uh, my colleagues in Chicago and uh, in, in Wuhan. Um, you know, as you described, uh, this originated with an HIV initiative um, when we worked in, in 2003 with the Hubei CDC in Wuhan University in an HIV training, um, physician training program for the Hubei CDC physicians. And that led to over 2,000 health workers being trained and a, a decline in mortality from 50% to less than 10% in the early uh, ART era. I would answer the question about how we started with the development of deep, long-standing personal relationships with Wuhan University, with the local health department, that then led to an invitation from then Dean Zhou Yunfeng at Wuhan University Medical School to help them think about reforms in their medical education process. And we were, uh, we were so fortunate in the beginning of that era. I mean, again, some of the most important outcomes are the personal relationships that have formed with Professor Hu Suping um, and Professor Fan Jingyi, who you'll hear from uh, later in, in, uh, in this uh, session. Um, I, I also want to say that we were so uh, fortunate to having received that invitation to come back to discuss this with the leaders of the Pritzker School of Medicine, Holly Humphrey uh, and Helena Bruckner, and so many other faculty members stepped up and said, this is a project that would interest them. Um, Scott Stern and Alia Hussein, who were the directors of the CPPT course that Hu Su Ping is now uh, the director of in, in Wuhan University. Uh, Vanita Rora, uh, Jim Woodruff, Weiwei Li, um, uh, Alia Hussein, Carl Matlin, so many other key faculty members um, gave time and energy. Many, many visited um, Wuhan over the course of, of this session. So in total, more than 60 US University of Chicago faculty, more than 60 medical students have also visited Wuhan doing various forms of outcome research for us. And that's tremendously enriched um, our experience. I think every faculty member has said they learned as much about their own work that led to reform and improvements in their own work here in Chicago as a result of, of their visit in, uh, in China. Um, we were very fortunate in addition to working with uh, the former Dean Zhou Yunfeng to work with uh, Vice Dean Yang Zhang and then um, Feng Yumei, with whom we, we uh, wrote our book, um, uh, Vice Dean Yushan Ting, who is currently the Vice Dean of the Medical School, 
and a variety of really talented uh, faculty members, Yu Baoping, uh, Yu Fong, uh, and, uh, and others. Um, there's so many, I, I couldn't name them all. Um, so we're, we were able to bring, and we were very ambitious in this project, we, we conceived literally taking the entirety of the Pritzker School of Medicine uh, curriculum that had just been reformed through an extensive Pritzker initiative and bringing that to Wuhan um, and working with modification. So I know the other speakers will talk about the outcomes a little more specifically. The kinds of things that we worked on were as led by Tony Montag, tissue structure and function. So the integration of some of the basic sciences or Carl Matlin in cells, molecules and genes or the integration of the clinical and the basic sciences together, which is really the heart of CPPT, which I think is the, the gold standard for the Pritzker uh, curriculum. We brought early patient contact. So having first year medical students with very little knowledge go to clinic and see patients and learn how to interact respectfully and, and professionally. And we actually introduced a new clerkship in general practice that mirrored family medicine in the United States, um, which was a novelty at the time, which is a very growing um, need in China for primary care physicians. Um, I would say the, the most important part of our work in some ways is clinical reasoning and the development of students as lifelong learners. So less didactics and, and lecture-based and more individual small group um, learning, problem-based learning, and more self-directed learning. And this has now been taken up avidly by the faculty in Wuhan through the use of MOOC, which is online um, training. And as you can imagine, during the COVID-19 uh, era, which unfortunately began in Wuhan, this has been invaluable um, to the Wuhan faculty. I'm happy to say we've published over 100 different papers and and I mentioned that we were able to publish a book that tells our story, but also actually describes in its entirety the Wuhan reform curriculum as, um, as some milestones for other um, medical schools in China to, to learn from. Um, this project was honored but within Hubei province by the highest award that's given, the Chime Bell Award in Hubei province in 2011 for the outstanding work and the contribution of the University of Chicago faculty. And I'm also happy to say that in 2016, when China first developed an accreditation process for its medical school, the Wuhan University Medical School received the highest possible uh, rating for, um, for their uh, curriculum and for their teaching methodology. Um, about uh, five years ago, they also de the China decided they would standardize residency training and Wuhan University asked if we would participate in that as well. And that John will talk much more about that. But that led to, you know, I just want to finish by talking about the critical role of the Beijing Center, because um, we developed a series of programs with the Peking Union Medical College Hospital, a variety of other surrounding hospitals and uh, the National um, uh, Health and Family Planning Commission, now the National Health Commission. So the National Ministry of Health sat in on several of those sessions over four years, and that led to the development of the standards for residency training that are now in use across China. And I'm delighted to say that John Leo was um, recruited to come and to serve in that role as uh, the residency director for uh, the Zhongnan and Renmin hospitals uh, in Wuhan. So, you know, I, I would finish, I think, as we began um, with these strong faculty relationships and personal ties. That, that clearly has made a huge difference, I think, in the work that we've been able to accomplish in Wuhan. And the fact that we've had the Beijing Center and then more recently, the Hong Kong Center as places where we could go and try out some of our ideas, talk with faculty leaders, and students in those areas at uh, regional meetings to share ideas in innovations in medical education has really been extraordinary. And we've worked with Peking Uni University and Capital Medical University in, uh, in Beijing, China Medical University, uh, the Shandong University, um, several different uh, universities in, in Shanghai. So, you know, I, I would just um, close, I think, by saying 
saluting the vision of the Board of Trustees and President Zimmer and understanding that that our relationships with China have just been uh, so important. We've we've learned so much. Our faculty have uh, from these relationships. Um, I'm very proud of these outcomes, and I'm eager to hear what uh, Jing Yifan and Hu Suping have to say. Thanks. Rinslow, thank you so much for a, a terrific overview of your of the Wumar project and uh, its impact, uh, not only in Wuhan, but uh, throughout the country. Uh, next up is Professor Hu Suping. Um, and um, uh, prof uh, Professor, um, I would just uh, like you to uh, explain to the audience, uh, many of whom may not be medical, uh, what CPPT is and describe how Chicago's CPPT was adapted to the Wuhan curriculum. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Professor Miller, for your kind introduction. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here to share our experience of our medical educational reform project cooperated with the University of Chicago. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah, I briefly presented from these three parts, why reforms was needed and how to do it, and what the challenges and the solutions. Next, please. Next. Yeah, this is the baseline survey by colleagues from the University of Chicago. From here, we can see the teaching method is mainly lectured and the small class discussing learning is less, and the students lack the time and ability in autonomous learning, the lack of curriculum in integration and, and something like that. Next, please. Next. And then this is the baseline survey from the students. As we can see here, the students also when some changes. Next, please. So we began our cooperation in 2008. Next, please. And we established several groups both of our university. This picture shows us this is the first time the professor from the University of Chicago to came to Wuhan to help us training our faculty. Next, please. And this slide shows us the curriculum before reform and after reform. As you see now, before the reform, the curriculum was separated, not integrated. And after the reform, we integrated some of them. I focus on the CPPNT. Next, please. Next. Yeah, as you know, to understanding the nature of diseases is based on pathology. And before the reform, pathology and the clinical medicine were taught separately. CPPD integrates physiology with clinical medicine for third year medical students, makes up for the deficiency of separation, disconnection, repetition in order to let students better grasp the diseases. And we reduce the lecture time increase the time of case-based group discussing, stimulates students' autonomous learning ability. Next, please. Next. And this is the contents of CPPT. It includes the common diseases. Next. Next, please. 
And the goal of CPPT is that students master the course, pathology, diagnosis, and treatment of the selected diseases during the clerkship. And when they meet the patients, they can make a clinical decision. And also training students' ability of clinical reasoning, self-learning, information processing, and the communication skills. Next, please. And of course, there are challenges on the reform. The first of all is teachers' acceptance and the recognition of integrated curriculum. And the second one is we link the teaching materials and the clinical cases. And the third one is the clinical and the pathological integration. In order to solve this problem, we established the teaching group and train the faculty. We ask the teachers to prepare handouts and the cases before the curriculum started. And we prepare lessons together and rehearse, rehearse it. Next, please. Next. Yeah, this, this picture shows us the first group of our faculty to go to the United States and to learn from the teaching process in University of Chicago for two weeks. And every day we have our lessons with students together. And in the evening, every evening after we finished our lesson, we were reviewed together what we have learned today. Next, please. Next. We also invited the professors from the University of Chicago. Here, I especially say thanks to Professor Renslow Sherrill, Professor Scott Stern, and Professor Alia Hossain, and many other professors to come to our university to help us training our faculty. They help a lot. Next. Next, please. Yeah. Before we start our curriculum, we prepare the lessons and the rehearsal it. Next. And after we doing that, this is a survey on the satisfaction of students in grade 2009 to CPPT course. And this is the first group of the reformed classes, reformed students. As you see now, they are, they, they, they are agreement was a little bit higher. They think the study of CBPD is beneficial to the cultivation of clinical reasoning. And the basic medicine and the clinical logic are closely integrated and something like that. Next. Next, please. Yeah. This is a survey results of teachers in involved in reform. The teachers think the reform has renewed our teaching ideas and updated teaching methods. The communication between teachers and the students has increased. And the frequency and the quality of communication with other teachers also increased. And the time for preparing lessons has increased also. Next. Yeah, next, please. Yeah, uh, at last, I would like to say to all of you, welcome to Wuhan. Uh, it's a beautiful and hero city. It, it deserves your visit. And thank, thank you for your attention.
Uh, Professor Hu, thank you uh, very much for uh, a nice, succinct uh, description of a transformation of uh, medical education uh, that uh, takes a, a tremendous amount of effort and work. Um, we know just at the University of Chicago, modifying the curriculum just a slight bit uh, usually uh, causes quite an uproar among the faculty. So I cannot imagine um, all of the effort uh, and persuasion that went into the faculty um, and students to embrace uh, the new curriculum. Um, so thank you very much. And um, we appreciate all of your effort. Um, next, we will have Dr. Professor Fan, um, uh, who will uh, uh, perhaps give uh, more of a um, uh, insight into how the curriculum uh, has uh, impacted the students and faculty. So uh, I think that is your question, Dr. Fan: is how has the curriculum reform impacted faculty and students? Oh, well, thank you very much. Uh Professor uh, Millis, and uh, um, uh, it's uh, my great honor and pleasure to be here today. Uh, since um, I have worked uh, in University of Chicago from 2004 until 2009, it's uh, 10, it's a, a long time. And also I uh, do have um, uh, uh, actually a very long, uh, <laughs> working experiences with uh, Umar um, following um, Professor Renzo Shira. So today I uh, put together some um, uh, slides uh, and uh, uh, I want to share together um, with everyone here. Uh, may I? Okay. Uh, so um, actually, uh, so the um, Wuhan University um, Medical Education Reform is called UMER. I uh, started to um, know UMER from the very beginning, uh, back to 2008. And it is an international collaboration in between Wuhan University and the University of Chicago. And uh, um, so this is the uh, medical school where we located nearby. And this is uh, two pictures you can see within 20 years, this place actually uh, changed a lot. Uh, so um, uh, in the university, Wuhan University is by the side uh, and uh, it is not, uh, so just like the president of Tsinghua University of Wuhan, uh, of uh, China had said, the university is not a congregation of high rise buildings. It is a congregation of masters in knowledge. So um, I think uh, this picture I borrowed from uh, Dr. Uh, Gui Xian. So he was the one, uh, Dr. Rensler Shura mentioned that he, he collaborated uh, for from the very beginning uh, in the HIV project. So he, um, when he was little, he was one of the little child in uh, like uh, at the bottom, but uh, uh, so the, it was, uh, the um, 10 years anniversary of the China's revolution year. Uh, and at that time, China changed a lot. And so when he uh, got this um, uh, HIV project and he um, got to know Professor Renzo Shura. And so uh, Dr. Shura worked together with him and found the great needs in Hubei province. And as the first group, me, recruited by uh, Dr. Shara in University of Chicago, and that this is back to uh, 12 years ago, 2008, I, I came to Wuhan uh, together with Dr. Carl Metling, Dr. Adam Sifu, come to uh, the School of Medicine of Wuhan University to do a baseline survey for the medical education reform. Um, and then in 2009, and the first group uh, we um, like welcomed uh, in University of Chicago at that time uh, to help them to uh, like know what is the new or the uh, updated medical education reform, uh, medical education means in uh, University of Chicago. 
and uh, you, you see like the other, some pictures made um, like similar to uh, the same, all the same with uh, Dr. Hu Suping had showed. Um, so in 2010, uh, Professor, uh, Pre President Zimmer signed the contract with uh, the, um, uh, the president of Wuhan University at that time and to start this reform. And as it actually the whole curriculum module reconstructed, it's a huge or gigantic project. And me, myself, I returned from uh, US and joined the faculty of Wuhan University. And uh, you can see this in this uh, construction of curriculum module, you can see the CPPT is the bridge a gigantic course, but it's a bridge in between the me basic medicine and the clinical medicine. And besides this gigantic course, there are other courses. Uh, they so tremendous work have been done so far. And a lot of uh, faculty members, they got trained um, and through different kinds of uh, teaching skill training, like the uh, small group seminars, how to write the uh, teaching cases, uh, the PPL, uh, like uh, focusing little group talking, uh, bedside teaching, um, many, many uh, meetings, many, many uh, like workshop. Uh, each time uh, it is uh, bilateral. I mean, the, each course have the um, like uh, in a Chinese uh, course director and also the US uh, course director and uh, uh, one, the University uh, uh, of Chicago professors came and they do each time they, uh, you know, um, they did uh, a lot of work on like um, uh, the, you know, uh, again, again, the, it's sort of like a brainwashing. Uh, the faculty members here uh, in Wuhan University, I, I personally, I really see the change um, in their thoughts and in their actions. Um, uh, so far, um, it's, uh, and, and also uh, some students, uh, like not owning the receiver side, like the students in Wuhan University, they benefit from the um, Umer project because they um, really uh, like got motivated to learn and they are uh, learning skills, their self-study skills improved, their communication skills improved, but also the students uh, coming from University of Chicago, Princess School of Medicine, every time when they come to like work together for surveys uh, to do the um, talks, uh, like, uh, like um, investigations uh, for the feedback check, each time they are strong uh, like um, relationship uh, had been built and also uh, developed a, a long term his, uh, friendship. And uh, uh, like this is a, just a summary, like until June 2019, uh, the all current students enrolled from the uh, reform curriculum since 2014, the uh, students in uh, Wuhan University School of Medicine and also like the uh, very important thing, uh, the achievement we have made is like in 2015, uh, the Wuhan University uh, School of Medicine, we got the uh, highest uh, possible accreditation, international medical education accreditation, uh, which is the eight years. Uh, and it's a very a big achievement. And also 300 communicative visits in between two schools, like uh, a lot of video conferences has been done and uh, the graduates um, like uh, passed the national board exams, the rates increased a lot. And 75% uh, 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 graduates enter into progressive study, which means now in the major uh, like uh, high reputed uh, medical universities or uh, institutes, they probably all have our um, uh, uh, students from, they graduated from the uh, program of uh, Wuhan University and they really earned a uh, good reputation. Um, and also uh, the um, 
some U.S. faculty, U.S. students, residents, fellows, uh, like more than 200, around 200 uh, times they come to Wuhan. And uh, the actually more than uh, 12,000 Wuhan University Medical Division faculty and students involved in this uh, uh, project and more than 100 uh, Wuhan University faculty visits uh, or short-term teaching training, uh, like uh, later um, John will show the IMEP, which is an intensive one. And uh, also the research and scholarship, more than 100 teaching research projects funded and uh, uh, around 30 surveys and uh, three, uh, 2,000 subjects and 220 papers, and uh, both in English and Chinese, and the uh, articles awarded top um, 100 national medical education research paper, and also some textbook uh, published also. And uh, also from uh, uh, in 2012 and 2017, uh, we held the uh, international medical education reform uh, in between uh, the like national level uh, uh, universities joined in and uh, uh, professors from the University of Chicago really helped uh, the Wuhan University. And uh, also uh, the uh, expertise uh, like domestic international medical education, they joined the meeting. Um, here is the meeting. Um, and uh, uh, like the in 2017, the former vice provost um, Melina Hell, who is also who was also my uh, PI, uh, so she visited uh, uh, Wuhan University. And also in 2019, uh, in June, President Zimmer uh, he himself uh, visited Wuhan University. Um, well, uh, this is the. Um, right before the COVID-19 pandemic. Actually, if there was no pandemic, we, I am sure in 2020 and 2021 should be the peak time um, and it's getting more and more faculty members involvement um, and the more and more students uh, benefit from uh, our program. Uh, besides uh, me, myself, I think, um, especially uh, in the uh, at the beginning of the uh, the Beijing Center in uh, like uh, established in 2010 until uh, today is 10 years past. And in Beijing Center, there are uh, some like um, several meetings. I think I still remember very clearly in my mind, like the Family Community Medicine uh, special meeting. Uh, conference seminars uh, we held in the Beijing Center and the uh, ethics, me medical ethics, uh, professional skill and communication skill training uh, in the Beijing Center and the surgery uh, uh, meeting as well. Uh, it's like um, in national level uh, in China, uh, uh, many universities they know Umar project um, well by the uh, Umar, uh, you know, uh, through Beijing Center and also really helped people uh, like spread the, um, uh, the updated uh, like uh, medical education ideation, uh, the teaching skills. Um, and uh, um, I think uh, uh, the every doctor is like very similar, like the educators similar all over the world. On um, the um, like one, uh, the at the beginning, I think uh, uh, maybe sometimes we feel the language barrier, the cultural barrier, or uh, other kinds of uh, barriers. But when we uh, communicate with each other, when we talk, uh, when we discuss, when we really think about uh, the similar uh, questions and problems, and we uh, really face the uh, the same same enemy such as like, you know, just like the, this, the um, same virus, uh, this global uh, like pandemic thing. Um, so, I mean, uh, UMA project really helped uh, faculty and students here. And at uh, one of the uh, person, luckily uh, like um, witness the change, uh, uh, me, myself, I uh, really, uh, uh, happy to share today and uh, very happily to uh, foresee in the future, I think uh, the uh, residency training program 
and maybe the fellowship uh, development uh, um, and uh, uh, our uh, uh, medical school students and the faculty members uh, will benefit from it. Uh, and also it's really like when all the uh, faculty members really improved in their ideation in medical education um, and they are uh, grasp the uh, uh, teaching skills and uh, they know how to learn together with the students uh, with the medicine itself. Um, I think um, more and more people uh, benefit from it and uh, the health uh, guardians uh, of our roles really fulfilled. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Millis. I uh, uh, still remember uh, when I was in University of Chicago in 2006, uh, I, I taught the, uh, to get the um, anatomy course, uh, which is called the human morphology course, uh, with, uh, together with uh, Carl Matlin. Uh, and uh, I, I still remember uh, surgeons, um, like I, I, I can clearly um, uh, 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 like, uh, you know, uh, foresee if I was not there, uh, uh, the surgeons joined the teaching at the beginning really helped uh, our students to motivate to be a surgeon, a great surgeon. So I, I, I think uh, uh, in the future in China, uh, we will know how to do it and how to really learn from uh, our US colleagues. And thank you so much for this opportunity to share. Professor Fan, thank you so much for your, your great talk. And um, I just want to make a, a comment. You talked about surgeons and, and the impact of the Wumar project on, on them. And I was a guest uh, speaker at the Chinese, uh, China Med uh, Surgical Week um, yes. in uh, 2019 in Chengdu. And the young resident that was assigned to uh, take care of me was from Peking Union Medical College uh, Hospital. It's where he was doing his residency. And I, as, as I was talking with him, I found out that he went to uh, Wuhan University for medical school mm -hmm. and had been... Um, randomized, one of the things that hasn't been mentioned is early on, the uh, students were randomized into the reform curriculum or the traditional curriculum, and he had been randomized to the reform curriculum, and he credits that curriculum and the, the creative and independent thinking and learning that that curriculum uh, fosters and him being able to uh, become a resident at uh, PUMCH, um, arguably the, the top uh, hospital, cert certainly surgical hospital in the country. And so it is um, a credit and, and how uh, your curriculum in the, in the reform project has specifically impacted the career of surgeons as well as obviously all the physicians that, that has trained. So I just wanted to mention that as a specific uh, impact to, to students. Thank you so, so much. Yes. Um, so our, our next speaker is Jonathan Leo. Um, and um, the question that we have for you is, um, what are some of the main challenges in the current residency training programs in China? Thank you, Dr. Millis, for that kind introduction earlier. So when I joined the Wilmer team in 2014, it was really a critical time for medical education in China. In one of their most ambitious moves to improve clinical training in the country's history, they set guidelines for the standardization of residency training programs across the nation and said that these programs would become mandatory for anyone wanting to enter clinical practice. And that year, they actually enrolled over 55,000 residents in these new programs. So the challenges of residency training that we faced in Wuhan were not only to get these new training programs to adhere to the national guidelines. Um, these were three-year programs, no matter what specialty you were in, and they had requirements for number of patients seen, number of procedures completed, frequency of teaching activities. These were all essential to the foundation of the program, but the leadership at Wuhan University and us we wanted to push this reform even farther. 
So the key question we asked ourselves was, what should residents look like at the end of three years? Because it's one thing to say that my residents spent three months in cardiology, saw five cases of heart failure, and passed the multiple choice question test at the end. But in actuality, what should they be able to do? What skills should they have? And not only what we think of traditionally in terms of diagnosis and treatment, but also in communication, teamwork skills, lifelong learning. Um, so after we determined what these outcomes should be, we went through each of the competencies and set milestones for each one, asking ourselves, what would a beginning resident look like? A graduating resident, an excellent physician. And we set milestones for all these 60 plus uh, competencies. And we were one of the first in the country to implement these for assessment across all our training programs at the Wuhan University affiliated hospitals. When we looked at our outcomes from implementing this framework, we were also able to identify some weaknesses in the curriculum. So one of our ongoing challenges as we try to address curricular deficiencies is the need for more faculty development as faculty themselves develop new curricula to address the gaps they see in education. To help meet that challenge at the University of Chicago, we, we developed this course called the International Medical Educators Program, IMEP, which aims to train leaders in medical education in China. And uh, it's new, but some of our graduates already have gone on to win teaching awards. They've obtained promotion through education activities. They've gone on to teach at a provincial level. Um, one department chief helped reorganize their training program to obtain national recognition as a residency training demonstration site. And we'll show a video about IMEP at the end of my segment. So Wuhan really has done so much to improve residency training in the past few years. And we're proud of the many awards they've gotten for being a model for residency training and the many national awards for residency leadership and outstanding teachers they've had in the past few years. We've even invited the ACGME, the organization here in the US that accredits all training programs, their leadership to visit Wuhan and they've been thrilled at what Wuhan has accomplished. Like Renslow has mentioned, we've published uh, papers on a range of different topics um, on education, residency education, uh, many of which have been recognized as the top medical education papers in China. Um, and we've written also recently about comparing residency accreditation guidelines between the US and China, which has caught the attention of the leadership at the Chinese Medical Doctor Association. As many of you know, the Chicago Center in Beijing has played a critical role throughout this entire journey of medical education reform, helping us to organize conferences throughout the years to showcase our work providing a platform for us to share and exchange ideas with our Chinese counterparts, and also develop relationships with key partners in Beijing, like uh, PUMCH, like the China Medical Board and the Consortium of Elite Teaching Hospitals, the National Health Commission, all of with whom we have played an advisory role in regard to residency training and our work on competencies. Uh, I'd like to end by echoing Renslow and acknowledging the strong relationships that we have formed throughout the years and that continue to push our work forward. We have tremendous respect for and, adm and admiration for our colleagues, people working on the ground like Dr. Ye Yanqing, Dr. Lu Zhanghong, and many others in Beijing and across China who are innovative, hardworking, and just brilliant. And we really look forward to many years of collaboration ahead. I think at this moment, we'd like to show a short video that introduces our IMEP program. Effective education does not occur by chance. It must be designed with careful thought and experienced educators. Here at the University of Chicago, we have a long history of rigorous education to those who enter. The International Medical Educators Program, the IMEP, is one of our latest training initiatives. 
The purpose of IMEP is to train physician leaders in medical education so that they can innovate solutions to their own big problems in healthcare and also serve as role models to other educators in China. When we go to China, a lot of times we get a lot of requests from physician educators asking us, can we go to Chicago to learn about clinical teaching skills or, or how to develop our own curriculum? Oftentimes we hear a lot of complaints and you know, challenges that the medical educators in China face, that teaching is not prioritized, especially in a very busy working environment where you compete time with clinical work, research. Teaching often comes the third or, you know, even uh, moved further back. The way that the program is structured is over the two-week time period, they go through a series of lectures, case discussions, observations, and project work. So not only is it learning about theories, it's also very practical because we want each of our participants to come over here with an educational idea that they can work on. And while they go through learning the steps of curricular development, they refine their educational projects. They come here for two weeks, it's a busy schedule, morning and afternoon, but we spend as much time, I like to think, in small group and in interactive conversations as we do in just lecture. Uh, we try to get them very involved here, but it, moving towards a project that they can take home. Because the ultimate goal, besides building a cohort, a community of like-minded educators from China, and that's part of what they will do here. It's also creating the start of a project and a plan for a project that they can take home and immediately start working on when they get home. And Jonathan Leo is going to be following up with them. That's the interesting thing. There's accountability to say, we want to hear from you. We want to know what you did. That's going to keep people going and give them the, um, the not just the incentive, but the excitement about going to do more. And I think that's a really unique part of this program. IMEP was born out of the need expressed by faculty members in China, but the real beginning of IMEP was the development of the relationship between Wuhan University Medical School and the University of Chicago, which began as an effort to reform the undergraduate medical curriculum in Wuhan uh, in 2009. The faculty who are working at the University of Chicago on this project have experience in doing training in China. Almost all of them have either been in China or have worked with the Woomer project in the medical education reforms in Wuhan uh, at the Wuhan University Medical School. When an individual physician in China or around the world applies to IMEP, we ask them to describe their work situation and of course their experience, but maybe most importantly, to come with an idea for a problem that they've identified in their medical school that they would like to address. And even with a plan for what they would like to learn through the IMEP program that would allow them to formulate a plan and implement that plan in their home institution. The idea of having two very different cultures both committed to making education the best it can be and be able to learn from each other. I think this is a truly unique program that I'm excited to be a part of. J Jonathan, thank you uh, so much. And um, we are at the time period where we were supposed to have a question and, and answer section, but unfortunately, because of the terrific talks uh, and videos that we've been able to, to see this evening, uh, we have eaten up all of the time for the uh, uh, terrific questions and answer, uh, questions that we had, so no time for that. Um, uh, if you uh, wish, you can uh, speak to the people at the center and uh, 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 point your uh, questions in their direction. Um, the program was supposed to end three minutes ago, and, and I understand that at least on the uh, U.S. side, we all turn into pumpkins 
by 810. So um, I think we're going to have to uh, close this event and encourage everyone to continue to tune in to the uh, 10th anniversary celebration videos. The next one is on uh, Thursday, uh, our Thursday uh, evening, uh, your, win uh, your Friday uh, morning, um, the January 15th. And um, it will be on interdisciplinary networks in the study of traditional and contemporary Chinese art. Um, so we uh, uh, want to thank all of the participants and, of course, want to thank uh, President Zimmer for his vision uh, more than 10 years ago to have a University of Chicago footprint in China and uh, then subsequently around the world. And I know that uh, the Beijing Center will always have a warm place in his heart as the first uh, center uh, and certainly uh, a leading center of education reform in, in China. So thank you, President Zimmer, uh, for your vision and all of the participants uh, in tonight's uh, session. Thank you very much.